All right, I'm going to throw off the hump here. I'm going to throw a couple of bowls off the hump. One of these bowls can turn into a lid later on. So I'm going to have a slightly larger piece of clay that I'm going to put down onto here. And that will allow me to, uh, throwing off the hump means that I'm going to throw center a little bit more clay uh, than I'm actually going to use for the piece. So normally with this amount of clay I'd be throwing a, you know, a medium sized bowl, but here I'm going to throw three uh, small bowls, small bowl shapes. So I'm, I'm, you've got a couple of ways that you can approach uh, throwing off the hump. You can center the whole piece of clay or you can center it in just pieces. And so I am going to leave this part at the bottom uncentered, uneven, and I'm going to simply focus on this part of the clay at the top. So this is my new pretend bottom, I'm pretending that none of this clay below that line exists. Uh, so I'm working with a very small section of clay, which for some people is actually, or for many of us, is actually harder or as hard as working with a large piece. You don't have as much to center, but you've got to do everything at a fairly small scale. So I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole. Now here's the tricky part. You cannot measure your bottom. You have to gauge what you think your bottom is going to be based on the distance from the inside there to this pretend line down here. And so you have to kind of take a guess at it. Now if you overshoot it and go too deep, you can simply make that your new bottom, right? Create a new, a new base there. So I've drilled my hole. Now I'm going to open up my wall. And I'm going to switch that directly into pulling up my, or I'm going to then switch and pull up my walls. Still want to compress my rim, still want to take care of water sitting in the inside. Got another air pocket here. I'm going to wedge my clay better next time, I guess. Today is all sorts of, all sorts of air pockets. So I'm going to uh, pull my walls up on this piece here. I got my wing rim wiggly like this. I can cut it off just like I normally would. On a larger piece, get the water out of the inside just like I would on the normal piece. You can use a round rib. Uh, one of the nice things about these small ribs is that they're a little bit um, easier to fit in uh, a small piece like this. Uh, so you can compress that rim. Some people also like these uh, small mud ribs because you can't really cut yourself on the edge where you can with the other kind. Um, and then I'm going to use my chamois, compress my rim, make it nice and clean. I'm squeezing the sides, remember, with the chamois. I'm not uh, pressing straight down. And then, of course, if I want to get fancy, I can bend this out and do some shaping with that edge here. Uh, you can use the wooden knife or the uh, metal uh, blade to undercut a little bit of that clay there. And then instead of using the wire tool, you're welcome to use the wire tool, uh, but I actually prefer to grab my fingers around here, make sure I've got some support for this, and then bring my needle tool across, and then I can lift this piece off of here and set it aside. Now immediately I've got clay on the wheel. I don't have to re, if I've already centered it, I don't have to recenter it. I don't have to clean off my wheel. I don't have to dry it off, get new clay wedged up. I'm ready to go right away again. So this time around I'm going to prepare a bowl that's going to uh, later on be a lid. Um, and bowl lids just simply sit on a rim or in the gallery on a pot. Um, they can have a split rim or not, the bowls themselves. And where you would trim a foot, you trim a knob, or you throw a knob on top of there. So I'm going to have this be the bottom of the bowl, but I'm going to leave myself some clay down here that I can use as the knob later on. And so just kind of giving you a visual there. So I'm going to drill my hole just like I normally would. Get some water in there, compress my rim, open out my wall. Press my rim, pull up my walls. Now, if I'm going to split this rim, if I'm going to have this uh, this um, bowl lid fit on the outside of something, and I don't have anything thrown yet, but uh, but I could throw something afterwards to to match this. If I'm going to split this rim in e either way, I want to make sure that I've got some thickness here, and it's nice and flat and nice and even. I'm going to split this a slightly different way than I uh, uh, split the other piece that I showed, and there's lots of videos, so there will be more. Um, I'm going to use the corner of this rib, and I'm going to press down like this. 
I'm going to try to keep that a nice straight angle. I wiggled a little. Try not to do that. Um, but I wiggled a little because I was talking. And of course, I recommend you don't talk when you throw in your pieces. But now this edge here, this gallery that I've created in here, means that this lid will be able to sit on top of a piece um, that, uh, that's, whose walls come straight up like that. Um, I have a little bit more clay that I can move underneath that section there, maybe even a little bit above it. Um, and then what I'm going to try to do is have this section down here be bigger than it needs to be so that later on I can trim a knob onto there. And so I'm going to uh, sort of shape that bottom section just a little bit with my knife, my blade here, and then I can cut it off with the wire tool or the needle tool. And there's way too much clay here for if I was making a bowl. But that section there is going to be where the knob comes out of later on. Now I've got enough clay left here to make another bowl. This one's not going to be off the hump. It's just with the clay that is left over from the hump. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I really center this because I was messing around with it a little bit uh, for that, that last piece I made and because I had a bunch of air pockets in some of these guys. And then this piece as well, I'm just making a simple bowl here, but this piece as well, any, any bowls that you make this way, um, obviously we're thinking make, using them to contain things, but the same form, if it's trimmed differently, could be used as a lid. And so I'll trim uh, one of these as a bowl and one of these as a lid to be used. Uh, on a vase or a, a box of some sort. So here I'm not going to split the rim, I'm just going to have it be a round, uh, you know, flat rim, simple rim, uh, so that it goes on a gallery or it goes on a shape that's got a little bit more complexity to it later on. Get my water out of the inside, use my rib in the inside. This piece isn't very big, but it's big enough for me to use my metal rib on the inside. And metal, metal rib is the rib that comes with your kit, but the, the rubber ribs are always fine. You just have to pay extra for them. So they're the, a little bit non-standard. We do have some in the studio, and you're welcome to use those. All right, and now I've used the, the metal tool both of these times, so I'll use the wooden tool to cut off the extra here. I know I've got too much clay, so I can really be rather aggressive in cutting that off. I'll use my knife to dribble some water down in there, and then I can use my needle tool to cut that stuff off of there. Oops. Let me get all the way underneath that part. And then, you know what? I think I'll use my rib on the outside of this so that I can pick it up right away without leaving fingerprints on it. So I'm just curving my rib a little bit, and that way, after I make this hydroplane, I can dry off my hands and lift this straight up and move it onto my paper. <laughs>